video I'm going to show you a different way of laying out a story. This time I haven't actually written a story yet, so I'm going to start with the photos. So I'll open up a nice blank page in my template and prepare to drop in a nice big photo to start off this spread. This story is about the Wings Over Illawarra Air Show, which happened on the 4th and 5th of May. And of the 1800 photos I took over two days, I've already gone through and sorted out about 60 of my favorites. Uh, and on probably only a dozen of these will end up in the magazine, but these are my best 60, I guess. And uh, now I'll go through and sort out what I want to put on this spread. When I took this photo, I already knew this was going to be one of my key photos. Not only does it show historical aircraft left and right, but the modern one zooming through the middle as well, and a little bit of crowd action. All a bit dark at the moment, but I'll take this into Photoshop and lighten it a bit and play with it. One of my signature moves, I think you would say, in Photoshop is to select the light areas of a photo like this, inverse the selection, uh, feather it a bit and then lighten the dark areas to bring out some more uh, detail in those dark areas and I only do that a little subtle movement then I go back and I do the same thing again basically select the, the uh, bright areas feather it with a different feathering size this time inverse the selection and then lighten the dark areas of it and you can already see there's detail coming out in the dark areas however this bit on the right I don't want it uh, I don't want any detail at all in there because I'm going to use that to overlay some text on so I'm just grabbing it roughly along the edges uh, do a good deal of feathering on it so I get my soft edge there and then I'll just bring the blackness right across to the right hand side so it's completely black. Now that's not too bad so I'll go ahead and save it with an appropriate name into that folder and I will use the highest number in the JPEG scale which is 12 that's to preserve all the resolution I can all the resolution possible in that photo. Now I'll go back over to InDesign, find that photo and drop it into that double page spread. Now while I'm doing this, let me just say that I don't like that photo for the simple fact of the halo effects around the black edges in that photo. You can see there there's, the blue sky is light around the edges of the black and nice and blue in the middle. I call that a halo effect. So I'll probably go back in and redo that photo. But for now, let's crack on with headlines and uh, alignments here. So I'm moving that photo left a bit so that the aircraft isn't cut in half by the center line of the page spread. I'll speed this next bit up a bit as well just to get us through it but what I'm doing here is playing around with the words to uh, design uh, a headline for this story uh, obviously I know what I want to say is wings over Illawarra but then I need uh, some a better font to make it look a bit more exciting and it doesn't really fit across that spread uh, nicely without um, it's not big enough it's getting split in half awkwardly so I'll try something a little bit trickier uh, and turn the Illawarra on its side and then wings over will spread nicely across the top so um, a bit of playing around there and I think I've come up with something that I like the look of and if I like the look of it then it's good enough eh? I'll move on to the next spread. Now at this stage I haven't decided what photos I want to use so I'm going to do a little bit of experimenting. 
uh, and I'll actually fly through this next bit. You get it? Fly through. Anyway, I'm making a joke of this because uh, this nice helicopter photo that I've played with for a while actually didn't survive to the end of the spread. I deleted it. So I'll just zip past this without really talking too much about it and get on to this next photo. Now I like this photo but it's a bit dark just in general so what I'm going to do is lighten it a bit. Now when I lighten a photo like this if I just lighten the photo in total then those white areas will get blown out and they'll be way too white. So what I do is I select the white areas, inverse the selection, feather so that it's not sharp around the edges, and then subtly light, lighten the dark areas. Very similar to what I did with the first double page spread. But I do this a couple of times. I go back in, now that it's lightened a bit, I go in and reselect the light areas, which now gathers up a lot more light area, feather it, inverse, and lighten again. That way I'm not blowing out whites, but I am lightening the photo in general. And this works nicely for me if you're careful about the um, feathering especially. And do it a couple of times so that you don't do a massive change in one hit, because things go wrong if you do that. But having lightened the overall photograph, now I've lost a lot of drama in the dark cloud. So what I want to do is isolate the aircraft and the bottom half of the photo and just select the dark cloud, applying some feather. And I'll make a new layer with just that dark cloud in it. Now I can darken the dark cloud to bring back the drama of the storm without overdoing it. But while doing that, the aircraft doesn't get darkened. So now the aircraft stands out by contrast against the stormy dark cloud. And with a little bit of sharpening on the aircraft itself, because it was a bit soft, I go ahead and save that now, ready to be brought into the spread. Now this next sequence, massively sped up, is experimenting on a couple of photos that I sort of wanted to put in but couldn't figure out how. I tried some messing about, some cropping and this and that. Put them on the page, couldn't make them work together and in the end uh, I just deleted the whole lot. So these photos never actually made it into the spread. This next photo I want to use is a kind of a must use just because it's so action packed. But the subject of the photo is too close to the center so it has to be cropped. And then the horizon was a bit off too so I had to twist it to get it back into level. Now having cropped it, um, it doesn't fit on a page in total so I've got to give it some new sky. So without going through the detail on this, I'll just flick through to the finished product and you can see I've managed to bring back the sky so that this photo is now ready to go on to a double page spread. But of course it can't sit there all by itself, so thinking, 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 how about some Warbird action? And since this compilation took me about 30 minutes to complete, how about I just press the fast forward button and get you all through it. This was just experimenting with what I had, seeing how it might fit together, 
making it look balanced and presentable. This photo, for example, I tried very hard to get it to fit in the bottom there, but it just wouldn't work. So in the end, it ended up on top in the corner with drop shadow to make it match the pictures on the other side. Then uh, I had this big gap in the middle, which I thought maybe some clouds there would work. So there's a warbird's cloud. Now I really like the atmospherics in this photo, but obviously there's too much dead space in it for a magazine layout. So I'll bring it in on the page and see how it works. But yes, I'm going to have to fill some of that space obviously. This photo lends itself very nicely to removing the sky and isolating the Spartan aircraft. So I can fit that on that page uh, nice and easy. And it even looks like it's meant to be there, sort of, avoiding the other aircraft. And a nice little bit of space there for some text at the bottom. 